Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. As I reflect upon my 2020 SHOT Show experience, I have noticed that there are a lot of trends taking place. And this is nothing new. Every year there are these new trends in the gun world. I remember in the past it was all about Cerakote coloring. Every gun, Cerakote, red, green, sand, you name it. All these Cerakote colors. And I've noticed that that has cooled down a little bit. But these other trends are on the uprise. And I want to share those with you right now. First, optic ready handguns. This is nothing new, but what I am seeing is that every company is making their version of an optic ready handgun. This is a Sky CPX2, it comes with a Crimson Trace optic, but every company is, is making it. it. It's a huge market right now. People like the idea of putting a dot on target and pulling the trigger, and they feel accurate with that. And many people have eye problems, and they say it really helps. That is here to stay, and it's only going to increase with time. Another thing that I've noticed is that there is a huge upsurge with revolvers. Now, we saw what Colt did. This is a King Cobra target model. We saw what they did with the Python. Kimber came out with a K6S with a 4-inch barrel. Smith & Wesson is always strong. Taurus came out with a couple new ones, as well as many others. Revolvers, I don't know what's going on with that, but a lot of companies are making their version of these very nice revolvers, and they're reaching that market, and I think that's something we're going to see a lot in 2020. Another thing that many people don't think much about unless you're actually into precision rifle shooting, it is a huge market, and people spend an incredible amount of money building the perfect rifle to, to reach out 800 to 1200 yards and hit that target that is this big. And even the optics are three to $4,000 that these people are, are paying and they're training and they're getting involved in this competition that is huge. It's, it's really big and it's growing like I've never imagined. So um, that area, if you're into it, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, keep your eyes open because you're going to see some of these beautiful high-end rifles that are being built in, and they just love it. Another thing that I noticed are short firearms chambered in shotgun loads. Now, Mossberg came out with the Shockwave a couple years ago. Remington followed up with the TAC-14. Here's a semi-auto TAC-13 that I love. It's got the Versamax system. It's a semi-auto. It's extremely reliable. But so many other companies are doing it. And, and that is attractive to people who want a home defense firearm, but they don't want the big shotgun. So they could have this. It's called the firearm. It's short, but the shotgun loads are, are very effective. Speaking of that, speaking of shotgun loads, I am also seeing a real uprise with the 410 shot shell right here. All right. Here's the Winchester PDX-1. I recently uh, showed the effects of this on some ice with my Henry Lever Action Axe and 410. Um, the ammo's expensive, but maybe it won't be as expensive if, you know, you're seeing Marlin, Remington, uh, the Henrys, and, and so many others making shotguns in 410. I don't know what's going on there. I know the turkey loads are, are very popular, but it's light recoil. And like I said before, everybody in the family can use it because it is softer, a, a softer shooting shotgun load that, that people love. 5.7 by 28 millimeter is on its way back. Now, people think that the Ruger 5.7 really caused this. And they did to a degree, but it never really went away. Now, we know the 5.7 by FN was a big uh, seller. They were like the only firearm, but that's not true. CMMG had a, an upper in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. Uh, Diamondback's making their version now. A lot of people like the Ruger 5.7. I think this is super cool. And um, the ammo, once again, is a bit more expensive, but we'll see what the future looks like as more of these companies are making it and more and more people are getting involved with the 5.7 by 28 millimeter. Multi-caliber uppers are a big thing now. People like it. Here's my CMMG Banshee. This is a, a great upper. I, I love it. It's chambered in 300 blackout, but simply ordering an upper, having it shipped to your house without an FFL transfer, pop it on the lower and shooting different calibers like 10 millimeter, a 45 ACP, 5.7 by 28 millimeter. You know, they're all available and it's just so simple to do and you don't have to take four rifle bags to the range. So a lot of people are getting involved with that. Companies are taking notice and they are creating uppers and it's been extremely, or it will be extremely convenient. Another thing that I'm noticing is 
heavy steel frame competition guns. Now, here is my Q5 match by Walther. Walther came out with a steel frame one. It's a big hit. Now they have one with a four inch barrel and so many other companies are doing it. Now the competition market is still very big. Most of them are chambered in nine millimeter, you know, with, with high cap mags, you know, 20 rounds or so, but people like it. They like the, the soft recoil, the nine millimeter, the heavy frame staying on target. It just helps so much with their competition shooting. Another thing that I noticed is 22 long rifle pistols. We saw what Glock did. We saw what Ruger did. Here's the Ruger. All right, LCP2, Light Rack, and Keltec and Taurus, and so many companies. Is it making a comeback? I, I'm never sure it left the market, but we're seeing more manufacturers build guns in 22 long rifle. And another thing that I noticed, and I'm going to show off one more gun here, is laser engraving on 1911s. Here's my Magnum Research Desert Eagle 1911. This, if, if you had a close-up on this, you'd see that it is very beautifully engraved. And a lot of people are, are getting into this. A lot of companies are making laser engraved 1911s. They, they take a beautiful gun already and they make it a one of a kind. The next year they come out with a different model, then a different model, then a different model, then you get yours. And it's sort of a one of a kind that suits your personality. A show off gun, no doubt, but you still get all the benefits of the 1911. So those are my thoughts, guys. The AK market is steady. The semi-auto market is steady. The, the shotgun market is steady. But these are some of the trends that I'm noticing, and I think we'll see a lot more in 2020. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and you guys be safe.